Hello students, this is Non-Flowering Plants and nevertheless we're going to cover the angiosperm life cycle, the flowering plant life cycle. So let's go for the overview here. We have seeds. Now the seeds in angiosperms are a little bit special. In addition to the embryo, we have another tissue outside of the embryo called the endosperm, uh, which is made by the confluence of male and female contributions from the mother and the father, but it's not part of the embryo. That is inside of the seed. Uh, seeds are dispersed as usual. They grow up to be sporophytes and then they make flowers. The flowers have some special structures that we'll get into. One of those special structures is the carpal and that is a structure that encloses the ovules and then ultimately the seeds. So we have ovules there. Then the same flower or other flowers makes pollen grains and then pollen grains during pollination are transferred to the carpels, usually of a different flower to, when they're successful. Then the pollen grains germinate, they grow pollen tubes, and fertilization proceeds, both fertilization that makes the embryo and fertilization that makes the endosperm. So let's go into it in more detail. Here we start with a seed. That seed disperses, and it makes a little seedling. That seedling then grows up to make a sporophyte. And that sporophyte then would have flowers. Now the flowers could be big showy flowers or they could be flowers that are pollinated by the wind. For instance, grasses are flowering plants and they have flowers. Uh, nut trees are flowering plants and they have flowers. But those flowers are kind of small, whereas tulips have flowers and tulips have larger flowers. For many flowering plants, the flowers have four worlds of structures. The outer whorl is a whorl of sepals, and then there's a whorl of petals. The next whorl in is the male whorl, and it consists of a series of stamens. And then the central whorl is a whorl of carpels. The carpels will have ovules inside of them. Here's a blow up of an ovule. It has two integuments on the outside, then there's a new salus, and there's of course a micropyle, um, but there's no pollination drop in these things. Then in the center, there's a megasporocyte, and that megasporocyte undergoes meiosis and makes four megaspores. Three of those megaspores wither, and that leaves one functional megaspore. That functional megaspore undergoes a few mitotic divisions and it makes a female gametophyte, a megagametophyte. And that megagametophyte we call an embryo sac. So in this case that's diagrammed, we have an embryo sac that consists of three antipodal cells, an endosperm mother cell that has two nuclei called polar nuclei, an egg, and then a synergid cell on either side of the egg. That's the megagametophyte or embryo sac. Okay, let's go back and look at the male structure. So we have stamens. Uh, at the top of stamens are anthers. Those anthers have a series of microsporangia, four in this case. The microsporangia contain within them microsporocytes. The microsporocytes undergo meiosis and make microspores. Those microspores then will divide a couple times and make pollen grains. So pollen grains are microgametophytes. Those pollen grains will consist of a couple of cells that you can see, a generative cell and a tube cell. You can usually see both of those. And then those pollen grains will be dispersed during pollination. Pollination could happen by insects or by hummingbirds or by bats or by wind. Lots of different types of pollination. Pollination is the movement of pollen grains from the stamens that produce them to stigmas, often of flowers of a different plant. And then the pollen grains germinate and they grow a pollen tube. That pollen tube will have two sperm nuclei inside of it. It will then get to the egg and fertilize the egg and that makes a zygote. And then the other sperm nucleus, in this case, fuses with the polar nuclei of the endosperm mother cell to make endosperm. 
In this case, endosperm is a triploid tissue. It's nutritive. It grows around the embryo. In other flowering plants, the endosperm could be of a different ploidy. So we end up with an immature seed that then matures. It's inside of an immature fruit that then matures. Inside of the seed coat, we have endosperm. And then inside of that, we have an embryo. So I've made this little poem for you. The poem reads, eggs plus sperm make zygotes that grow up to be embryos. Polar nuclei plus the other sperm nucleus grow up to be endosperm. Ovules plus sperm result in immature seeds that grow up to be seeds. And then the carpal, after fertilization, is an immature fruit which grows up to be a fruit. And a fruit can be something that is dispersed by birds and it's fleshy, or it could be something that has wings and disperses the seeds that way, or it could be something that opens up and releases the seeds, and then the seeds disperse, but the carpal wall, the fruit, remains on the mother plant. And that's all that I have to say about that.